Hi there, my name is Jackie and I'm going to be demoing our little wallet today and then after that I'm going to be demoing how to put the snaps on. So I'm going to start with, uh, here's the pattern, it's called Little Wallets, it's by Valerie Wells. Super easy thing to do, it's usually just one seam. Okay, so you're going to start out with, well it, it is, it can be. Okay, so this, we're going to start out with a few pieces, so if you buy a kit, we're going to open it up and this is what comes in it. We get a few questions about this. So inside of it is a sew on snap, a piece of fusible webbing which is uh, sheer tailor. This is what it looks like. It's 950, that's the number 950F and it's a heavy uh, interfacing, uh, fusible interfacing. Okay, and then you'll get two pieces of fabric. Okay, so there's your fabrics. So with these fabrics, you want, you're going to be able to have enough here to do one wallet and a few little extra pieces. And so if you save enough of them, you can do a couple of wallets. So I've actually pre-cut these at this point, and let me show you what I've done. So this is the inside of my wallet. This is the outside of my wallet, which when folds over, it'll look like this. This is my interfacing that I actually cut the same size and same shape as the wallets. It's just easier for me, then I don't have to go trim it. Okay, so we're going to start cutting your pieces out. And then you're also going to need three pieces for the little wallet, the, the little pockets in the wallet. And you can cut them on a fold, but it's actually easier if you cut the three pieces. The first one, which is the, the little pocket one, if you cut that five inches by six inches and the second one, five and seven eight or five and three quarter inches by six inches and the last one six and a half by six inches. Then you can just fold them, press them. I don't know how good a job I'll do here but basically and this wonderful little blue mighty, I think that's what it's called, it's a great little iron to have at your side and the little wool mat. It's wonderful. You can cut these all individually, but I'm going to show you a tip to save you time. Layer all three pockets, third one first, second one, and then the first one. I have an acrylic, you can't, you can see through it maybe, but I have an acrylic uh, template that I had made for myself, so I can lay it on here, like so, line and them up. That's because you've made how many wallets? I have made thousands of wallets. So I lay it on there and I can actually cut this. So here's one that's already been cut out. All three at the same time. All layered, ready to roll. Okay. If you made, your it made that out of template plastic, would it work the same way? It would, but when you're cutting it so with your rotary cutter, oh, excuse me. Um, the question was, if I made it out of template plastic, this template, would it work the same? Yes, it will work. Because it's thin, though, you need to really watch it when you're cutting with your rotary cutter, okay? So, but with this one, I can just go to town on it. Okay, so now I'm going to press, this is my front of my wallet, this piece here. So I'm going to press the interfacing to the front part of the wallet. So if you're looking at a wallet here, oh, it's tight. That is the front. And it just lays a lot better with the interfacing on that piece of fabric. You can try it the other way and, it, and you'll see the difference. It kind of buckles a little bit. Okay, so we're going to press it on there. Remember to put the fusible side down, which is kind of bumpy, it's rough. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be on the bottom of your iron. And you don't have to press it very long, it just needs to attach itself because it's going to be pressed again and again. Okay. So you don't have any steam? I don't, I use steam, steam sometimes, but I use steam when I am in another step. I'll show you when I use the steam. Okay, so there, the interfacing's on there. It's not perfect, it's a little off, that's okay, it's not gonna make a bit of difference. So then we're gonna layer the, the inside of the wallet first, the three little pockets on top of that, and the front of the wallet is gonna lay right sides together on top. Now, uh, nobody asked this question, but I'm gonna answer it anyway. Okay, this is a directional fabric. See? I've been asked about this because I cut it wrong every time. And, well, and uh, I, the, a lot of the wallets that I do, I like that directional fabric because it's really cute. And a lot of these you'll see are directionals. 
and the little bird up there. But so in order to do that, you have to think upside down. So with this is when it's really nice to have a clear template of any sort. The, the little plastic template will work too because you can see through it. When you lay it on your fabric, okay, all right. So when you lay it on your fabric, lay it upside down. So the curve is down. That's where your flap is going to be. So wow. that is what your little picture is going to be right here. So, oh, I have done it. I give those ones away. <laughs> those are gifts. Um, okay. And, okay. So on this one, this is a kit, right? This is out of our little kit. So here you have this great little bird. Now what I did my template. That's the only problem with the plastic template is it get lost. Okay. So instead of doing it this way, that's the way you want to do it. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, but that's how it's supposed to be. No, not if, you're, if you need it the other direction, upside down. So you can't use that bird. There's not enough room back here. So you need to move closer to one of these that are further down on the bottom, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'll, you know, kind of center him and leave a quarter inch seam allowance because that is what we're using is a quarter inch seam allowance when we do this. And then cut it out. But you still have this chunk over here where you can actually get, if you want it for the inside of your wallet, here, oh, here's a good example. I have this bird on the outside, but I also have them on the inside. There's enough room here that you can get another one. But you'll also need this for one of your pockets, like your, your middle pocket. So, cut the pocket first, and then just go over here and cut a bird someplace over here, and there's enough there to get your pocket. So there's enough here to get three pieces out of your wallet. And fussy cut everything. So... We'll move him aside. But that is important. I, that's a question I get all the time. How do you, what do you do with directional fabric? Well, that's what you do. Okay, so now we're gonna put these together and we're gonna pin them. So I have a big funky pin here that if you can zoom in, Val, right here you can see where the three pockets are. You wanna make your first pin just above the third the, the, fa the, excuse me, the third pocket, okay? Because that's where you're going to start sewing. So I'm using this pin so it's, he's different. And then I pin it in six places. Just pin it around the quilt. Or, excuse me, the wallet. Kind of like around the quilt. Okay. Sandwiching it. All right. And then I did not bring a sewing machine, but I did bring wallets that are sewed. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show that. I had set up a sewing machine right under the table. I didn't want to. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go from this wallet to this one that's already been sewed. So I actually started where this pin was, this pin. I dropped my needle into there right at the pin, pull the pin out at that point, go forward and backward. You want to back tack on that, okay? And then go a quarter seam allowance, quarter inch around the whole entire thing. When you come to the last corner, turn that corner go down about three quarters of an inch and back tack. You want to leave a big opening for your fingers to go through to turn it inside out. And this is in blue thread so you can actually see here. You can see that. So that's where the opening is. All right, super important. If you can get your finger in the hole, you can get the, fa the excuse me, the little wallet flipped. It's not fun if you get it too small. And I have done that before, it's where it's very small. Okay, so now it's sewed. Clip all the little threads away. And then we're going to actually take, and I'll do it with this one here. Um, I'm just going to use, I'm going to cut it freehand, okay? I'm going to cut my little corners. Do not cut into the corner, otherwise you will be turning it right side back out and sewing it again. So I clip both those corners, and I do use a ruler for the bottom. But that's the only place where you can really use a ruler. Cut that off a little bit so it's down to about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut these little corners. Again, don't cut into your corners, your, into your threads. And then very carefully, use a pair of scissors if you want. Actually, we have some awesome scissors. Where did I put those? They're right here. They're Kai scissors, and they're very sharp. And you can cut through. This is, I think, six layers of fabric here. So, you can come here. And you can trim that right away. And f starting out, this is probably the easiest way to do it. It was with a pair of scissors, unless you happen to have your cutting table right there. 
Okay, trim that down. I never All right. trimmed mine before. Oh, trimming them makes a big difference. Okay, I have a pile of trimmed ones <laughs> right here, okay? When I make my wallets, I usually do like 16 at a time. And at the end of this, I can explain how I do that and make it go really fast. So now we're going to flip it. So you want to open the little wallet up at that opening, okay? You want to put your index finger in there. I'm left-handed, so I'm doing it left-handed. If you're right-handed, you'll want to do it. Matter of fact, if you're right-handed, this is another tip. You actually might want your opening on this side, you know, but Val and I are both left-handed, so we do things correctly, and everybody else does it incorrectly. So, and when I teach this, I always forget that, and I, I, that might be a reason people have such a difficult time turning it inside out. So you might want to try it over here, okay? So stick your finger in there, and then where the three pockets are, pull this up, here we can do this. Okay, see those three pockets? You want your finger to go on top of those three pockets, okay? Super important, and you can feel them. You can feel one, two, three inside. Go down to the opposite corner, put your finger in there, take your thumb on the outside and pinch it hard. Hold that together, okay? And you can turn that wallet around your thumb, okay? And I'll start poking out that hole. This is when it's nice to have a pretty good size hole because it's small, your thumb has to go through there too. And I've done many where I could not get my thumb through. So I've got the little thing poking through and I'm pulling it. And pull it all the way through. And if you have a good size hole in there, it'll flip pretty easy. Now, I have this cool little tool. We're trying to get them, but we have not been able to locate them yet. It's called a Stuff It tool, and there are people at home who have these. They're fabulous. A chopstick will work. A knitting needle will work also. It has a little bead on the end down here. End of a paintbrush works too. Oh, good. So you stick it in there and then poke out your corners. Not too hard because you could poke right through it, which I have done hundreds of times. And then you got to flip it right side out and re-sew the little corner. Now on one of these, and then be very careful with these corners. Okay. All right. There's our little wallet flipped. Sometimes, when you flip that inside mm -hmm. out, it's so cute. it is cute. Mm -hmm. This will happen. I actually had students take their whole entire wallet apart. They're like, but it didn't work. I did something wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. They just only put their finger over the first two pockets and went down to the corner and turned it inside out. It turned inside out, but that third pocket was on the wrong side. You just turn it around. Okay? okay? Yeah. That's a biggie. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going, oh, oh that's now, an aha moment. <laughs> it is an awe moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we want, oh, okay, uh -oh. see, look what I did. Uh -oh. My seam, I cut too close to the seam. So I have a reject pile that I go back to later and, <laughs> and turn them all inside out because this is one also. Oh. And this one, what happened, and you'll have to zoom in on this, when I layered my fabrics, one of the fabrics folded at the corner. And I don't know if you can see right there, there's an opening when I sewed it. So I need to rip this out, pull that piece of fabric back, and re-sew it, and it'll be fine. But when I turn it in, yeah, so I, I did that last night. So, I, so we'll flip another one. Oh, yeah, I, you name it, I've done it. I have... That's good to know. I put right? the snaps Isn't on. Oh. Kind of oh. <laughs> Especially how many times I put them on upside down yeah. or turned them the wrong way. Yes, but we got very off. creative with our photos, and you would never know that they were upside down. Yeah, I was helping making samples, and I should be fired from that department because <laughs> <laughs> I did three out of my four upside down, and oh. I swore each time I was doing it right. Okay, so let me get this real quick. And, you know, I take these. Of course, I can't go to the movies right now because they're not open. But um, when I go to the movies, I'll take a bag of these with me and flip them inside out the theater. And I have friends that go with me, so I bring two or three of these. So then we're all sitting there in the aisle <laughs> flipping these things. and Got to make. Okay, now we're going to press it. Here we go. Okay. This is where um, steam not so much at this point. Okay, so that little opening that I had, those seams will just tuck right in, which is really nice. And then you can whip stitch it close if you want, but pff, that's crazy. Okay. Top stitch Yep. 
So there we go. This is all ready to be top stitched now. And what you do, here's this one that's been stitched. I turn it over, uh, no, I guess I do it from this side. So I start here, right handed, but I'll probably start over here mm -hmm. at that point. So start there and back tack again, go all the way around with like an eighth inch seam. And then it closes the seam at the same time and it's all ready for a snap. That's so cool. So, okay, now I don't have steam, but I brought this. Okay, so, because now we want to fold the flap down so our little bird is all happy. And, and you want that, this is where you really want a, a good iron and you want the, the, uh, the heat to set this flap down. So move it around to where you like, like the flap. You know, some people like it way down here. I like it about up here, okay? Press it. And now I might have to actually use this. Good steam is great, okay? Starch. This it's is flat. flatter. Mm -hmm. It is a starch. It's really nice. It's a super lightweight, non-sticky. Mm -hmm. You can get it unscented. And this is unscented. And looky, there, it's all ready. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. So cute. So cute. So that is the end of the wallets. Now, before we move on to the snaps, I do want to show you how I do um, to make it go faster for myself. Okay, assembly line, exactly. So you know that you can cut these individually like this, but if you're doing a whole bunch and the same thing, cut strips. Cut your strips the whole entire length of the fabric. And you can get eight wallets out of this. My garbage, okay. So they're long like this. This is my back one, number three. The green is number two and the red is number one. Fold them in half. Oh look, they're already pressed for me. Fold, <laughs> fold them in half. And then you can just lay them on top of each other and you have 42 inches or 44 inches of uh, your little wallet pockets. So you don't do that though with the outside, do you? Not if you're fussy. Cutting. No, but I do um, to save myself time because I'll buy the uh, the sure tailor gosh um, you know 10 20 yards at a time and I'll actually fold it like five or six th thicknesses put my template on top of that and cut them out in these shapes so they're done so I can just I have my little pile I do have a little pile I think there's like 300 in here already <laughs> cut <laughs> So, and they just are in a Ziploc bag and there they sit until I need them. So, and then when I go to the store and they're out, it's like, woohoo, I have some at home. So you lay them like this, and then I think I actually have one I started to cut here. So how wide is the strip? Well, on the pattern it tells you um, how wide you need to make them, and it, so it's twice that width. So if it's finished, uh, it's, this is five inches, five and three quarters, and six and a half. So, okay. Then... Well, I don't know where my pre-cut ones are. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I think I trimmed up the edge on it so that I could actually show you how I do this. But, but when you get it all laid out like this, then you can actually just put your little template on there, cut it, go to the next one, cut it, go to the next one, cut it. And they're all ready. They're laying just like this, ready to go. And you've already got your backs cut and your fronts cut, so you're ready to roll. If you're fussy cutting, you cannot layer a bunch of fabric on top of each other. You actually need to cut 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 each one of these individually. Although, if it's not fussy cut and it's something like this, you can do that. You can cut two or three at a time, no problem. And the same thing with your inside, which I did with these red ones. I just folded up my fabric and I kept it about six inches wide because that's how wide you need it to be. Uh, it's five and a half, I think. But um, then you can, you can cut a bunch at the same time. So yeah, when I, and all these little birds, they were all, it was uh, leftover fabric from a quilt we did and I was able to do a lot. So I think Val might want one of these. I do. I, I know, really it is pretty cute. Them. Okay, do anybody here have any questions on this? I'd like one of those plastic templates. Well, we are working on it. Really? Yes, we are. Oh, we just haven't, good. this thing happened. Yeah. <laughs> Life happened and it was not kind. So, um, because yes, we know where we can get them, got the information we need, and it, you know, just everybody kind of stopped. 
So, you know, maybe in another month things will start moving again and we can do it because we really want the templates. Yeah. They're awesome. They're probably going to run between 15 and 20. I'm not sure. They're, they're, uh, but that's when you only get a few, that's what happens. So, but it would be nice to actually have something on this so I don't lose it all the time. And I do lose it all the time. Um, any questions about the wallets? Any questions that you have? Oh, wow, that's a good job. Okay. You did a great job. Okay, yeah. so. Snapsetter now. Snapsetter. Okay. So, the Snapsetter, right it here. This eluded me for the longest time. Yeah. This is very cool. There are tons of Snap Putter Honors. I mean, I don't know what you call them. <laughs> Uh, they, they all, everybody has them out there, and I have used everything. There's the kind that you, you uh, crank together, mm -hmm. but the problem with those is they don't, um, when you clamp it, it's got these little soft things on them, and you cannot clamp because these, the snaps have a curve to them. So what happens, we'll do one of these guys, um, you don't want to break the little, the little pearl part of it. And so they have these little soft rubber ends on them, but so you can't get it very, you can't get it clamped down like you need to. And it pulls apart. So I don't like those for that reason. Then there's little ones that they work, but they're really difficult. So this one, it's been out for a long time, and I don't know where I saw it, but I must have gone someplace and saw a demo, and I thought, okay, it looks awkward, but it is awesome. So there's two pieces. There is the snap setter, which is actually three pieces. You have a base, which is this one, then the middle piece, which is this one, and then the top, which is this one. And then there's also an adapter. This will work with, in the package, it comes with little flat rings. It'll work with the flat rings because this is flat. But if you want to use pearl buttons, then you need an adapter, no matter what size you want to use. This happens to be a size 18. That's because the, the top of the snap is a size 18. Size 16 are the size that you'll see on not baby clothes, you know, on the inside of the legs, mm -hmm. and they're tiny. So if you actually took the hardware, and you'll see that the hardware is all the same size as a size 16. That's these little silver pieces. Okay, and turn this one upside down, and this is where people get confused because they don't understand the adapter. Val, if you can zoom in on this, you can see that the, the hardware on the, sna on the pearl is fatter, it's wider. That's what makes it a size 18. But where the little teeth are right here, they're all the same size as a size 16. Did that make sense? So the adapter ad accommodates the, the girth of the snap? Exactly. Oh, she asked if the adapter <laughs> accommodated the girth of the snap, the width of the snap. Yes, it does. Okay? So... Where is my little adapter? There's, There's something, something under here. here. That's it. Okay. So here's the adapter. It's got that little bowl shape, and that snap will sit right in there. Okay? And it's protected. So when you hit that with a hammer, it is not going to break it because it's the same shape as the snap. So that is why you need an adapter. Very, very, very important. If you put this over in this one, which is flat, first of all, it won't fit because it's too wide. Okay, and then you started putting these things on top of each other, then you hit it with a hammer, yeah. it will break the pearl, and then you'll have a shattered pearl. Okay, have you experienced that? Yes, I have a terrible time with that. Do you have the adapter? Yes, okay, <laughs> have, and you broke your pearl. Well, but I think I put it in the wrong place. Okay, that could be. Yeah. All right, okay. There was another reason I thought that I because I thought maybe yours were pulling apart. No, I just can't get it. Okay, well, we're going to fix that. Okay, so on our wallets, this has not been marked. We need to mark our wallets. And to do that, this is how I do it. It's real scientific. I put it on a, I put it on a mat, and I find a center line, okay? And I move my little ends around until I find what I think is the middle, okay? Then I take my very scientific pin, and I go up. Until I think, hmm, I want the snap right there. Okay. Now, with, this, with the little pin in there, I pull this up and mark where I want my snap. Okay. Then, this is black. I do not have a silver Sharpie, but a silver Sharpie works great on dark fabric. But if you don't have a silver Sharpie, then you just take that pin, 
leave it in there like so. Okay, so that's marked. So now I know where I'm going to put my snaps. So they, they're going to line up. Okay, and I'm going to use a little red one on this because the horse has a little red cheek. <laughs> and that little snap is going to look really good on him. So I'm going to, because I have the pin in the top, I'm going to do that one first. It doesn't matter if you do the bottom first or if you do the top, top first, but I'm going to do the top first. Okay. Oh! Uh -oh. No, I can still see my pinhole. Okay. God. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay. I told you, I have done everything. This and, uh, <laughs> Live TV. Okay. So, yeah, at least you didn't have to beep it out. That was probably good. Okay, so I'm going to cover up my pin poke with my snap and pop it through this and pull the pin out. Pop it through. See the teeth coming through? Okay. All right. Hang on to it. Always hold on to it. I'm going to lay it upside down with holding it there. And you can still see the teeth. It's really important to hold this stuff in place. Otherwise, every movement you make, it will move it out of that little bowl. And then when you go to put it together, and that could be one of the problems too. Okay, this is the bottom, like this here. So the number two goes on top of this. And what I really like is this anchor, it holds everybody in place. Okay, so now you can see the little teeth there. See them? Mm -hmm. Okay, the second piece that goes with this would be, because the teeth are there, you don't need the teeth again, all right? So now we're gonna use this little one and this one oh, you know on the back of these they have the best directions on how to so when you forget because you won't remember but now this will be on YouTube and you go back and watch it all the time it shows you how the two pieces that you need for each one of these so these two that's together and then these two are together and then on the little snaps it even shows you better how you pair how you pair everything up so since we have teeth on the top here, we're going to use this piece here, okay? And this little one has a flat side, it's flat, okay? And then if you flip it over, it has a little wobble to it. It's got a little, it's bulged out a little bit. The bulgy part needs to go down. And if you've done snaps and you've snapped your wallet together and then you've pulled it apart once or twice and then it comes apart, it's because it's upside down. So you can rock it into the hole. That way you know it's the correct one, all right? Then the top piece, this is a plug here that'll go over everything and it hooks to your anchor again. So we're gonna put it there, all right. So you don't use all your purple things? No, but I will use that next, okay? Oh, okay? We're just putting the pearl on, okay? And we can do this again. A Couple of good whacks, pull it apart. And I have done this where I have forgotten to put that piece in and the plug sticks to the teeth in there. This will stick to the teeth. Okay, so, and I've done it where I put this one on it too. I mean, I, you name it, I've done it. Okay, so there's the first half. Um, and you can get them off. A pair of pliers and a screwdriver works pretty good. But usually, well, this end is you can usually bend those teeth back up. But on this one, on this little ring one, it's very... It's very soft metal, and it kind of gets destroyed. The other three pieces you can usually salvage. Okay, so now we're going to do the bottom. So the adapter is going to be set aside. And now we're going to work with this one because the ring is flat, and that's where it's going to sit. Okay, so the ring, again, it shows you how to do it. It really does. Okay, we're going to slide it under the first pocket. Yes, I have slid it under all three before. <laughs> and try to center it in your dot. Push it through. You see the teeth come through? Hold on to it. And this, you need to actually lay this on a flat surface. I'm going to slide the little well in there and drop the ring in there and hold it in place. Okay? And I can feel it. All right. I'm trying to turn around so you guys can see it there. Okay. And you can see the teeth come oh, yeah. through. You can feel them too. Okay? So the second piece goes on again. But you, again, you need to really hold that in place. Okay. And there the teeth are. Uh-oh. See, this is moving around too much. It came out of that little well. So, I'm not going to chance it. I'm going to redo it. Oh, it was in there, but it slid too much for me. Because if you don't get it in there straight and you hit it with a hammer, the teeth will come off to the side. I don't know if you've done that before. Okay. All right. 
there. Okay. Now, this little piece that has the plug in it, it goes, or you can call it a, a tit if you want. I mean, that's what it looks like. So it does. So it goes on there. It's a little boob. And then this one goes over the top. Well, it is. I mean, I don't, I think they have names, but I don't know what they're called. It's a stud. It's a stud. Okay. Well, it's a stud. It's a good thing. I'm, on a, I'm doing it on a horse, so why not, right? It's a stud horse. Okay. So now we're going to hit this. This one goes together much better. Oh, I didn't show you before. I actually checked these to make sure there's no air in between. Because if you don't hit it hard enough, there'll be a little, you'll see through there to the other side. Oh, okay. And you'll see the little teeth. Put it back on there and hit it again. But that one whack did pretty good. Okay, then I snap it. Make sure it snaps a couple of times. Yep. After this is over, I can work with you on it and we can see what you're... <laughs> see what's going where, on with you. Where we're not... <laughs> Where it's not working. Okay, so there, there's that one. Okay. So, and I'll do another one again rather quickly. Um, yeah. So horsey. Yes. I have one of those snappy things. I've never used it. Now the, you know how to use it. You know. Here's one with okay. lighter I got one right here. I got, I got a cave one set up here. Okay, so we're going to have to find our scientific center here. I put Velcro on mine, and then yep. I glued the... Oh, snap. <laughs> find my center, go up, and I actually do this on every wall that I do. I don't just think I've got it in the right spot. I actually check every time. Okay, and this one doesn't light enough fabric that I can mark the top and the bottom. I don't have to worry about leaving my pin in there. Mark it. Mark it. Take the pin out. Okay. And we'll do the bottom one first this time. So, line them up. That is a pair, and that is a pair. We're going to do the bottom first. So we're going to use the flat anchor, and then this will become later. And then, I, and if you want to line everything up in order, do that. If it, whatever makes it easier for you, okay? You probably should the first couple of times. Yeah, I know I do. I have well, let me tell you. After you've taken these pins out a few times, these yeah. button, these snaps, you line them up. <laughs> it's it's awful. It's awful. Okay. Again, flat surface, slide it under there, drop it in that little well, hold it. Okay, second one goes on top. And the little stud goes into the well, okay? And then the plug goes, see the plug's got a hole in there, so it'll go over that stud. And there we go, <laughs> it just cracks me up. Okay. okay, and you can usually tell when you're hitting with a hammer, if you've done it correctly, uh, you can feel it. Okay, and then you can look, you can do this side too, and you can see that it's mm -hmm. flush with the fabric. Mm -hmm. With those ones I was talking about, those crimper ones, this is where you have a problem. It will not f be flush with the fabric. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, first, and then you go, got to go get a hammer and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we set that aside, and our anchor is now going to be the little bowl for our little pearl snap. Pop it through there, drop it in the bowl. And I do make it look easy because I've done, you know, a bazillion of these things. Okay, now, I almost forgot to put this piece in. If I had put this piece in without it and hit it, the little teeth that are poking up would have stuck into here. And if you look at some old ones that I have, they're full of holes because I have done it a lot. Okay, now remember, rock it into the hole, the, the little well. And, okay. Okay. Take it apart. Sometimes it's a little tough to get it apart, but it'll come. All right, there we go. Oh, yes. And then check it. Really cute. Snap it a couple of times, and then it's good to go. All right, there's number number two. So cute. That's awesome. All right, any questions? Uh, Grace says thanks for the wobble tip. That's where I forgot which way it goes. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Grace. <laughs> and I didn't let's see. Nope, looks like everybody's. Seems to be pretty happy. Sweet. All right. Now, okay, I, I'm waiting for the phone call then. <laughs> Thank you. That is Thank great. You. Yeah, so stick around and we will go over that. And you can actually put a snap on one and find out where it's not working. Okay. Hey, Jeff, say goodbye. Oh, goodbye, you guys. <laughs>